All right, all right. You guys have been asking and asking and asking about this. Uh, so we're going to dive into a little bit of Victory at Sea Pacific today. I don't know that this is going to become a regular series right now. I've got so many other things going on, but I at least wanted to take a look at it. And if it seems like there's a lot of popularity for it, then maybe we'll mix more of this in with Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts while we're waiting for the uh, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts campaign to come out. Uh, you guys seem to be dying for more naval uh, combat on this channel and uh, as I acknowledged months ago it is not a strong suit for me so I'm excited to learn and get better at it as with anything that I do I'm gonna need your help your suggestions those of you who have played this before please feel free to point out what I need to learn uh, for now I just finished the opening tutorial for the US campaign uh, we, we bombed a destroyer I sank a, a submarine I-20 and uh, we are in the aftermath now of the events of Pearl Harbor. I believe we're at 12 hours past Pearl Harbor or something like that uh, is what it said. Uh, so now we have another objective. We're still in the tutorial, but I thought I'd dive into it here. We're going to take command of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. Right now we just have the USS Litchfield, this destroyer that we've been commanding thus far. It's been pretty fun. So I don't know what else is going to happen right now. So it looks like we're going to take a look at the strategic map of the Pacific. This is really cool and feels a little overwhelming at first glance. So we've got the operations in the Pacific. We're going to just do our little map thing here and the wheel to zoom in. Pretty awesome. You can see here the Japanese areas that they control. All your fleets are listed here. So we've got Task Force 8 in Hawaii. Task Force 3 at Johnson Atoll right here. Task Force 12 up in the North Pacific. And, of course, there's Midway right there. Choose a flight of aircraft to send out scouting. I don't think we want to send out fighters, do we? Well, it's better than sending out torpedo bombers, I suppose. So we need to right-click right -click on the map within its range. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's go looking this way. So if flight's going to make its way to that position, we'll go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Enemy force has been spotted and now visible on the map near Johnson Atoll. So that's going to be Task Force 3, huh? Right click on the Japanese fleet. Select attack. Intense, man. We're going to get right into it. Up to a thousand times speed. I'm not sure we need to go that high, do we? All right, so Task Force 3 is engaged. The enemy near Johnston Island. Enter combat view on the map. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so before the battle begins, you may quickly set up your ships into uh, squadrons into formations. Okay, cool. Oh, the USS Indianapolis. Hey, we were just playing with her in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This looks a lot more like her, though. Eliminate the enemy task force. Okay, seems simple enough, right? Oh, I thought we were taking the whole thing. I guess we gotta select all guns. There we go. Now. Okay, so now we've issued move orders to the entire fleet. So we've got the Indianapolis, which is a, a cruiser, and then we've got three destroyers, the Hopkins, the Southard, and the Long. And I thought I had music turned off. That's at least, that's weird. Music is turned off. All right, well, it's not nearly as intense when you don't have the music on, but a little easier to talk about what's happening. So I don't know how far out this guy is. Let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, he's pretty far away still. So we're going to have a little while before we actually make contact. But that's nice because it gives you plenty of time to kind of plan out what it is that you want to do. Okay, well, I guess we've opened up on him. See if we can get a look at what we're facing. We got a light cruiser here that I feel like that should probably be my first target. Oh, we landed some hits right off the bat. Beautiful.
I feel like on this particular game, at least till I figure out what I'm doing, I should really stick to seeing my own side. I'm gonna go ahead and move this way. Do we have torpedoes? Probably on the destroyers. It's gonna take me a little while to get used to all this. Alright, we're gonna fire some torpedoes on these bad boys. I would guess that ideally you would probably pause a lot on this game. Why is Indianapolis not moving? Our torpedoes in the water there. Can I? I wonder if there's a way I can just kind of put folks on AI control and just control, say, just the cruiser. I guess I could probably look into that and find out. I suppose if we're just giving attack orders, they're going to attack as they see fit, unless I'm reading that wrong. Let's look at some of the other features here. Recall flights, select observation flights, stores, propellers, rudder, fuel system, turbines. So this is just kind of damage indications. Oh, we can switch to AA weapons. That's cool. Actually a concern in this game compared to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, of course, where there is no concern for that. Looks like we're about to take out enemy fleet destroyed. We sank all of them? Oh, man. I didn't realize that was happening. Guess those torpedoes were pointless, and he's got some coming at me. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Go down. The report of the battle is on your desk. Press M and click on Log. Very cool. In the morning, I like how they type this up like it's a battle report. Uh, on Tuesday, 9th December 1941, Task Force 3 spotted an enemy near Johnston Island heading west. The enemy fleet consisted of two destroyers, one light cruiser. Task Force 3 came under fire and responded in kind, sinking the Tenru. Uh, the resulting battle was a decisive victory for our naval forces, resulting in the sinking of three enemy vessels, and our fleet sustained minor damage. In all, Task Force 3 launched three torpedoes, fired 134 gun rounds. Both fleets were evenly matched. So to have such a decisive victory in this engagement is something that could help turn the tide further in our favor. The captain's and crew's professionalism under fire was pivotal to the success of this combat. Rear Admiral John Morris Smalley, Task Force 3. Very cool. So that was exciting. That was a fun way to kind of dive into it, and we gained 50 war bonds. Now we're going to conduct a submersible mission. USS Drum. I've actually... Where have I seen the USS Drum? Okay, here we go. We're making a toll. Uh, the periscope depth, the USS Drum can see what facilities the enemy has on the island. Press G to raise... Ooh, this is cool. <laughs> okay. And the music has returned. I think we'll go ahead and leave it on. Hopefully it's not too loud. Look around. All the structures have been scouted. I guess i got to find them first over this way. Oh, can we zoom in a little bit? Yes, we can. Oh, we're spying on you. Reconnaissance is complete. Lower the periscope. Press M. Look at the log screen. Military state installation consists of eight anti-aircraft batteries, seven gun emplacements, six searchlights, one control tower, barracks, a warehouse, airfield, a hospital, and considered a basic port. Okay. Japanese supply convoy. We should not allow them to resupply. Okay, cool. So let's do this. Okay, here we go. Let's enter combat. We're going to take on these guys. Let's hit OK. Command the submersible to surface. All right. Here it comes. So dramatic. 
It's a supply convoy, so we really have no reason to be underwater, I suppose. But I'm sure we're going to try that out just because. Here we come. Let's go get a look at it. Oh, it's pretty far in the distance, apparently. All right, we spotted the convoy. You can hear that diesel engine running. So I suppose we're going to want to fire torpedoes, no? light gun so we're firing our our three inch gun right now we're nine nautical miles out torpedoes have a range oh no that's the the range of the guns is nine nautical miles the so torpedoes have a range of three three miles i don't think we're nearly that far out so it doesn't seem like the ideal direction from which to fire a torpedo but we'll do it anyway Oh, we fired uh, <laughs> six torpedoes. Excellent. So we'll start firing the uh, the guns on the other ship. I guess. Maybe not. Select all guns. So it's left click to fire the guns. See if we have any luck with these torpedoes. I can't see them now. Oh, was I too far out? I must have been out of range when I did that. Okay, I get it. There's got to be a way to check your range. I'm not sure what that is. All right, not a problem. We'll fire some more. Are they ready to fire? Maybe not. Uh, missed him. Okay. Not gonna miss him from here. <laughs> bye bye. Oh wait, did you fire that behind him? Really? Really? Oh come on. Okay. Use the gun. There's a torpedo. Is not gonna miss. I guess if we issue attack orders, they will automatically use the weapons for the job. I don't have to manually do that. Unless I choose to. That's good to know. Yeah, that one's going to miss. gonna miss too all right we got to talk about our uh, torpedo aim here now that time we hit him with the gun so it slowed him down and now this torpedo might miss in front
I don't think this one's going to miss. This time he got it. There we go. All right. So I think that's the end of that mission. All right. Now we're going to conduct a raid mission. So uh, is this going to be the Doolittle raid? No. Wake Island has been occupied by the J by Japan. Hong Kong has been occupied by Japan. Manila has been occupied. Yeah, that's all stuff we expect. We are to locate and bomb the Japanese garrison on making a toll. Move Task Force 17 to the island. Okay. Let's do this. All right, this time we've got ourselves a aircraft carrier. So we're going to right-click on the port's icon and choose attack. So I guess we've got, oh, we've got the Yorktown. Very cool. So we've got to zoom all the way over here to the, the port. Oh, on the port icon. Where's the port icon? I guess any icon will do, huh? All right, so now there we go. Under this order, squadrons, ships, and aircraft will target multiple structures in the port. Here come the dive bombers. It's going to be fun to follow these guys. So we're getting them all up in the air. Looks like we've got three squadrons of Dauntless SBDs. This is, oh, there's four. I think they're waiting for the other ones to get in the air before they all head out together. Five squadrons? Or five, five groups in the squadron. Six. So each one's three, I guess. So what do we got together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got about 20... 20 dive bombers going up. We'll speed time along until we get them up there to start their run. They're going up in altitude now. They're preparing to do their thing. I'm sure we're going to see some anti-aircraft fire here because we, when we scouted them out, there was quite a bit of anti-aircraft. I think there were at least six, six guns if I remember right. And we'll slow this down when we get close. Oh, it's going to be a nighttime attack. Are you kidding? That doesn't seem ideal. Oh, this is cool. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to start the run. Okay, here we go. I'm guessing an aircraft is going to be coming in. We're still at about 6,000 feet. Oh, this is... An, I could never, never have been a dive bomber. The adrenaline, the... The guts that you had to have to do something like this. Take a special kind of guy. Nice. Beautiful. So the hangar's out. Let's see what else we get. Oh, look at the spotlights. That's really cool. Nice. I'm gonna get over here and look at the port. Everybody do their thing already? They're headed back. Well, they didn't do nearly as much damage as I would have liked to have seen. What really did we do? So we're gonna get the ships close and we're gonna bring them in and do this too. I want to watch the dive bombers coming back in to land. It's going to be interesting this time of day. Um, it's cool too because when when you control the carriers, they do turn so that they're with the wind. You know, the carriers had to have the wind going with them to help get the planes off the ground. And, uh, so your carrier has to turn. 
it's little, you know, attention to little things like that that I always like to see. Bring them in, boys. So you see the carrier turning. A lot of planes still on the deck. Okay, that was a little weird. Apparently, I zoomed out. I wonder if there's a way that you can just tell it to do stuff automatically and you don't have to control every battle. I don't know. I guess that's a, something I'm curious about. So the dive bombers came in, picked up some more bombs. They're going to head back out for another run. While we follow the Louisville heavy cruiser, they'll get some good guns on this thing. Looks like we're coming back up on morning again. That'll make it a lot easier to target this guy. Okay, our SBDs just made a second second run, and it looks like they did really well that time. Right-click on Johnson Atoll and order Task Force 17 to repair and resupply. Okay. There we go. So, nice little raid. Did about half damage. I would have liked to have stayed and finished that off, but I guess that's not really happening right now. The, war uh, the bar shows the relative strength of the two sides of the war. When ports are captured and vessels are sunk, it moves. New technology, such as ships and aircraft, can be unlocked after successful military actions. That's very cool. What else? War bonds may be spent to construct ships and improve ports. War bonds are generated over time by your ports. Capturing ports increases war bond gain. Okay. So war bonds is basically the currency in the game. All right. So I think that's the end of the tutorial. So now we're going to really dive into the actual campaign itself. Maybe. Okay. So we're going to begin constructing new warships. So we're heading over to the port of San Diego. We can see all of our ports. Shipyards. Excellent. Oh, nice. I wonder what things are going to cost. Unlock ship classes appear in this list. Select a ship class to see its stats. All right, so show me one of these. Atlanta class cruiser. <laughs> Only uh, So that costs 95 Take an Atlanta class cruiser, cruiser 24 days. Obviously, that's not realistic, but hey, uh, the idea is that these were already being built. If all docks are full, new ships will be queued for construction. A commission is a new fleet. Okay. I want to see what do the big boys cost. So Richelieu class. That's weird. Why would we have... Okay. Pennsylvania class battleship. Yorktown class carrier. Wasp class carrier. All right. Cool. So I just got a ton of notifications about places that were occupied by Japan. So now you can see the war progress is much more realistic to what it would have been. I was wondering why it was showing in my favor. So we're going to attack, make an atoll, current objectives, there's the victory conditions. So it's nice that it kind of gives you areas to focus on. Okay. Enemy vessels have been spotted, two destroyers near Midway. What do we have up here? We have torpedo boats. That's not a lot really to deal with that. So let's take one of our fleets. So high morale increases efficiency of all shipboard systems. Low morale hurts it. Clicking the morale icon will assign the crew to minimal duties, increasing their morale over time. So we have to manage rations. They level up. So that's cool. Yorktown, you can see all the information about these various ships. It's funny to me that to think about a carrier only being 20,000 tons. <laughs> I mean, we don't realize just how, how small and how light these carriers were compared to a modern carrier. So as I'm looking at the map, you can see all these convoys that are delivering supplies and uh, really needed things. So we've got to be really careful to protect them. We got these two destroyers up here, so I'm, I'm going to have to send somebody to go deal with that. I'm just not sure who. So this is a battleship fleet right here, but they're still being repaired. The Pennsylvania is in pretty good shape. The others not so much. 
I'm looking to see who we might have. The Lexington Task Force might be somebody we can send out to go deal with this. I'm not entirely sure how good it is that I go after a couple of destroyers with these guys, but looks like the torpedo boats are going to go out and deal with them. I am going to send Task Force 12 that direction, even if they don't engage this, this force. All right, so that happened automatically, and we did destroy those two destroyers. So that's cool. And we vessel spot in the North Pacific. Where at this time? Four submarines right in the middle of our shipping lanes. So we spotted them with a spotter from Pearl Harbor. So we're going to send this task force. It includes the Enterprise, a couple of heavy cruisers. It's a pretty big force to go after four submarines. But mainly I just want to have them out there because then if they run into something else, they'll already be in position. So I'm afraid that Task Force 8 is not going to catch up to these subs in time to be able to stop them from hitting these cargo ships. But unfortunately, that's just the reality of the situation. I'm looking at my war bonds total, and I'm thinking I should probably be ordering up some more ships while we're doing all this. So I'm going to go ahead and pause for just a second to do that. Let's go ahead and look at our ports once again. Um... I mean, I'm guessing that's where most of this is going to have to happen is in San Diego. Has a shipyard, has a shipyard. Pearl Harbor has a shipyard. Okay. So maybe we build something up there. What kind of ships do we have? These are oil tankers, light cruisers, Pensacola light cruiser. So the biggest we can build in Pearl Harbor is a heavy cruiser, and that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and queue up a Northampton. It's going to take 45 days. Upgrade for 60 war bonds, advanced radar, plus three an aircraft plus five kilometer in aircraft range. Yeah, that's worth it totally. As long as we hang on to that ship. Uh, how about an Omaha light cruiser? Let's go ahead and queue one of those up as well. Same thing. We're going to do the upgrade. And I'm going to go ahead, I think, and in San Diego, get ourselves queued up another carrier if possible. Yorktown. Yep. So let's queue, queue that up. Um, we don't have the war bonds to do the upgrade. I'd very much like to do the upgrade, but I guess that's not going to happen right now. I don't know if we gain war bonds. We do slightly over time, but probably not enough to be able to do that right now. So this is cool. We're looking at the personnel. And now we can see who's in command of all these various ships. So we have uh, Rear Admiral Osborne Bennett Hardison. Uh, there's Bill, Bull Halsey right there. He's on the USS Chester. Um, I'm just looking to see who all these folks are. So that's pretty neat to be able to see those uh, commanders and the various task for forces and who they are. Uh, I'm just looking to see who else we have. Task Force 12 is the one that we headed out. That's under Jack Fletcher. Just looking to see who else I might recognize among these folks. Task Force One. So I'm not sure why they already weren't doing this, but I've ordered Task Force One uh, to repair and resupply at Pearl Harbor because the Maryland and the Tennessee have some serious damage. The Pennsylvania's got a little bit of damage, and we obviously don't want to take them out in that condition. So it's... a uh, Looks like January 19th of 1942. We are not catching up to this Japanese task force. In fact, it looks like we've lost sight of them completely. Uh, we don't have any current scout planes in the area to really see for sure where they were. We just have a last known position. So what I think we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of squeeze these guys out. I've got Task Force 3 right here. It's Indianapolis. It's the one we used earlier. I think they could probably do the job on these guys, in which case we'll probably go ahead and just send this task force to um, go ahead and move toward Johnson Atoll. I don't think we've got a port there. Oh, we do have a port where we can repair and resupply, so that'll work for them. We can station them there as kind of a forward operating base. 
We do have Task Force 12 headed out that way. Enemy vessels spotted near Hawaii. And I just took my task forces out. All right, enter combat. Task Force 5 has entered combat. And I think we'll wrap up this first episode with this mission here. Uh, oh, so this is our lone submarine. And what are we up against? This is going to be interesting because I have no idea what I'm facing here. Fleet, yeah. Let's move. Let's maybe not necessarily attack yet. So I've got them submerged because I didn't know what I was going to be up against. It looks like we're getting close and we're going to be able to spot. He's, we got a light cruiser. Interesting. This might be more than I really want to try and take on with these guys. But we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. I don't know if we can run deep and still attack. I guess we'll find out. There's a fleet alert over here. Midway Defense Force has completed its repairs and is ready to undock. Okay, that's fine. Oh, hey, hello. I think we're uh, I think we're too low to actually fire on him. Oh hello. We just went right underneath him. We don't want to come all the way up. Please tell me that was my torpedo. It was. I don't know that we... Oh, hey! Oh, he's right there. We're still going to miss, though. That was a terrible shot, dude. Come on. Do better. Now he's going to know where we're at. Don't miss with this one, please. Oh, now he's backing up. Oh, come on. Now we're running away. Do we have rear torpedo tubes? We do. We have aft torpedoes. That's what we're going to need here. Oh, boy. Gotcha. Boom. Nice hit. Not enough to sink her, though. Oh, here comes another one. Now we've got a problem. And there's actually more out there. Oh, we're near making a toll. That's why. Oh, we're coming right up on this guy. I don't know that that's a good idea, boys. Hit him. Hit him. Are we out of torpedoes? No. We are out of torpedoes. They were low already. Okay. We ought to just get out of here then. All right, so we're going to order Task Force 5 out of here. That's just that single solitary submarine. I do want to try and engage some enemy somewhere. We did spot somebody up here near the Aleutian Islands, up here all the way over by Kamchatka. We do have some torpedo boats, but I don't know if they can take on two light cruisers. We might just kind of let him come in a little closer before we deal with that. We've got something going on down here. I don't know if that's just Task Force 5 again. We're just going to try to get them out of there. Okay, here we go. Task Force 3 has encountered enemy submersibles near Johnston Island. I think we're going to just let that play out. I guess that's probably how that happens. Enemy fleet destroyed near Rook Island. Let's take a look at that. Oh, I didn't mean to hit combat. I'm still learning my way around the controls here. 
But I guess that's what we're going to do is we're going to take on this fight. So let's go ahead and see if we can find these guys. We got a cruiser and some destroyers. Of course, these being submersibles are going to be tough to find, especially if we don't have what we need to do that. Oh, I think we found them. Slow down. They've already got torpedoes in the water. I do not want the Indianapolis getting hit by a torpedo this early in the game because that's how she sank. After dropping off the atomic bomb, she was sunk on the way back by a submarine. All right, we, we've lost sight of this guy again. I've never tried to go after submarines in this game yet, so it's kind of interesting. There, there. Oh. Now we've spotted him. See if we can get this guy. Oh, there's a submersible back here too. So we we spotted at least two of them. Oh, jeez. Oh no, that was us. That was uh, depth charges. We hit him. Beautiful. Let's watch the Hopkins now. So if we can go after this guy. We'll just let these guys do their thing. Oh, watch it, boys. A lot of torpedoes being fired at me right now. What is Indianapolis doing? Oh, she's stopped to let the torpedo go by. Oh, and then the Southard went right into it. Oh, no. Thanks a lot, Indianapolis. Way to hang them out to dry. Oh, jeez. All right. So far, not so good. Wow, was that close. Jeez. All right, Andy, hit this thing. Please tell me we have depth charges for this. Well, the long does. There you go. <laughs> Take that. Indianapolis probably isn't much use against the submarines oh, I can't believe I lost a destroyer already there we hit him again did we get all of them I think we got all of them we lost a destroyer though darn it I hate that okay so let's go to the log and take a look here our forces dealt a blow to the Japanese uh, Japanese wolf pack on Friday 23rd January 1942 sinking four enemy vessels however they report the loss of the USS Southard during the engagement uh, that didn't have to happen okay we'll wrap it up right there we're just getting into this because I want to make sure I give plenty of time for all of you to offer me your great advice on what I need to know about playing this game. Uh, I've only played just the tutorials to get my feet wet with the combat and the controls. I have no idea what I'm doing, but you were all begging for this game, so we're gonna play it. Um, so we'll see how it goes. If it seems pretty popular, maybe we'll do this once or twice a week. I'm gonna try to set settle into a regular schedule and I'm gonna let you guys know in a channel update in the next couple of days what the upcoming schedule is gonna be for uh, when you can see what videos so you have an idea of what to expect and when so drop a like leave me some comments and some suggestions on how to play this and we'll see you again soon thanks for watching